I'm Megan Willis. I'm a senior research officer working for SARDI, leading the Virtual Fencing for Livestock project. I'm Jake Fennell at Winton Station. We're about two hours north of Coop Pedy and five hours south of Alice Springs. I'm Francesca or Frankie Fennell. We've got 100 heifers in a virtual fencing trial with SARDI, which we're really excited about because we want to start rotating the cattle round more intensively. But to do that, you need fencing to stop them going back to wherever they want to go. So when Frankie reached out to me, we saw the opportunity to undertake a trial and expand our work from just the southern part of South Australia into the pastoral zone. So at the moment, virtual fencing is prohibited in South Australia for use in any livestock, but the legislation is currently under review by the regulatory body in South Australia. So we expect that to change in the coming years. So we went through an animal ethics process to get approval to undertake our trials. So virtual fencing devices can be used in South Australia for the purposes of research with animal ethics approval. So in order to get the trial going up here at Winterna, we engaged a supplier of virtual fencing technology that has a commercial presence in Australia and they have a lot of experience working in extensive systems as well. So they were engaged to supply the product for us. We sat down with Jake and Frankie and organised how they would like to use virtual fencing on their property, what problems it might solve for them. If we were to fence a place up how we would like it, like we need 24 paddocks for the rotation. It's about 1100k, so with clearing and everything, like it'd be five, sort of five million plus to fence it ideally how we want it. And then obviously working within the constraints of a very large enterprise compared to what is seen in other parts of the state. We designed a small trial that could test the capability of virtual fencing to exclude heifers from particular areas within a paddock to facilitate rest-based grazing. So virtual fencing works through a neck band that's worn by each individual animal and the neck band administers signals to the animal to communicate a GPS boundary to them so that they know when they're approaching a boundary and when they've reached a boundary. So the collar will provide an audio tone to warn the animal that they are approaching a boundary. Once they reach that boundary they'll receive an aversive pulse through their collar which tells them you need to stop, you've gone too far. Virtual fencing is based on associative learning in animals so that means that they learn to associate the audio cue with the aversive pulse. So over time they learn that if they modify their behaviour in response to that audio cue, so if they stop, turn around, back away, they won't receive an aversive pulse, but if they continue forward, they will. So LoRaWAN stands for Long Range Wide Area Network and is designed to process small amounts of data back and forth over long areas. So it's perfect for implementing virtual fencing. The LoRaWAN tower speaks to the neck bands and that's how the neck bands know where the GPS boundary is. When they're in range, it preloads onto the collars and then they can go out and the collars know where that GPS boundary is. And then information goes goes back from the collars through the tower to a online program that allows the producer to see where their animals are and then it allows them to change boundaries and manage the location of their livestock remotely. So we designed the trial to work around a central watering point so we knew the animals would reliably be coming back into the inclusion zone. It makes it really easy to manage the livestock and ensure that the virtual fencing is being implemented in a really ethical and practical way to work around their current management. So five weeks into the trial now we've seen really good containment of the heifers. Obviously animals are inquisitive so we've seen some interaction with that virtual boundary which is really good. That shows us that they are interacting with the boundary and they have learnt the algorithm and it's effective. We've had one fence shift and we've seen that the heifers have responded really really well to that so they've learnt that boundary has moved. We're also looking at feed on offer so looking at the pasture availability and the distribution of the animals within those areas when they're grazing and part of that will form a case study looking at the results of this study that will be available to South Australian producers via the PERSA website. If the virtual fencing is successful and can keep them where we want them, it'd make a massive difference to our future plans over the next 10 years. 
for one, we wouldn't need the fences like if we can control them where we want them. Also, cut down your mustering. Like if we can bring the fences in and congest them for a mustering, it'd save, yeah, save a lot of money. The Winton Station trial is part of a larger statewide project. The project is led by researchers within SARDI as well as the University of Adelaide and is funded by a South Australian Government Research Commercialisation and Startup Fund grant as well as the South Australian Drought Hub with contributions from the University of Adelaide.